Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to tonight's live stream. And uh, today we're going to be discussing some of the challenges that filmmakers face, particularly African filmmakers, because <laughs> African are a special case. So that's what we're going to be discussing about today. So uh, share the stream wherever you are watching me from. Share the stream and uh, I'm going to actually start by giving away some of the gears that I don't need. Um, actually I wanted to throw this gear away. So I figured out I know there are some filmmakers out there who can need them. I no longer need them. You know, like some of this gear that I'm going to show you today uh, the last time I used, maybe it's four years ago, so just been there in the storage, just lying down. So some, especially beginner filmmakers, can take advantage of such stuff. So just share the stream. Today we're having a, a topic, and hopefully <laughs> it's going to help you, because um, there are certain special challenges that African filmmakers only <laughs> go through. It's different to do filmmaking as somebody who has been like traveling around the world doing filmmaker, filmmaking in different parts of the world. You know, it's different. You know, they, the treatment you get overseas as a filmmaker, it's totally different from the treatment you get uh, when you're in Africa. You know, the way people pay in overseas, it's different from the way people pay in Africa. You know, in Africa, when uh, a person gives you a gig, it's like they are doing you a favor. <laughs> it's like they are doing you a favor. So it's tough. And those are a few things that we're going to be discussing about today. <clears throat> Just let me know where you are watching me from so that as people are joining, uh, as you can see these days, the moment is just half past seven or 19.30, I'm live. So I know some people be like, ah, no, Pedro, you know, sometimes he delays with 10 minutes. I'm sure they're still coming. So just share the live stream. And if there's nothing, if there's anything which is a problem with the live stream, just let me know. <clears throat> All right, so I can see Mr. Willard uh, is watching. Thanks for the great work. Uh, thank you. You are welcome. I can see Mr. Um, Kaira is watching as well. I'm here. I can, uh, Mr. Elisa is watching as well from uh, Ezeki also is watching from Malawi. I can see Mr. Stefan watching from Zambia. Um, Prima Live also says I'm waiting. Thank you so much. Uh, share the stream if you are joining uh, the stream. Share the stream so that at least we can start. Uh, Mr. Elisha Kazonde, Kazonde sorry, is also watching from Malawi. <coughs> Uh, watching from South Africa, Mr. Sifiso. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I've got a lot of people tuning in. Mr. Malenga tuning in from Zambia. Thank you so much. So, and as the stream is going on, please, if you have any questions or if you have, if you are a filmmaker, whether you have begun your journey as a filmmaker or about to start being a filmmaker and you feel like there are some challenges that you need to address. <clears throat> just write those challenges in the comments. Maybe some of those challenges, I have had an opportunity to meet them and defeat them. So maybe I can share some light, you know. It's difficult to just really make it in uh, videography or media space as an African filmmaker. And I, I have a lot of filmmakers who are my students from Africa and their challenges is actually the same challenges that I faced as well. So in this video, I'm just going to give light in terms of how you can actually move around such challenges. All right. So uh, like I promised that I wanted to just give away some of the stuff that I don't need. And this is not like the official giveaway. So I said um, I have over 25 filmmaking gear that I want to give away that I no longer need. So we have a, a special right now. There's a course that I'm running a special on, and I wanted at least 50 people to enroll in that course. Then I give to 30 people, you know, something. But uh, the number is still very far, still very far. Maybe we are just 10 or 9 people have joined. But today, I just want to give to some selected people, the, some of my students that I've been talking to, that I feel like if I gave this one, this thing, it could help here and there. So the first person that I'm going to give, um, uh, her name is Caroline. All right. Um, Caroline, she's a filmmaker. She has been doing a lot of um, wedding videography. So when I started with wedding videography, one, one of the things that it is always a challenge when you are shooting wedding videography is lighting. 
because there's different points, uh, there's different, uh, wedding venues are not really like, um, there's a lighting setup going on there. So as a videographer, you need to come in with your own lights at some point. And when people get so much excited and start dancing, you know, if you are using some of those lights whereby uh, when someone was dancing, then they, they, they <laughs> then they step on the cable and the light went off. It happened to me maybe twice or three times <laughs> throughout my career as a wedding videographer. So one of the things that helped me, like since 2020, 2020, it is um, these small lights. These lights are so powerful. They are so powerful. They are so, 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 so bright. Uh, they are bicolor. And the good part is they are very light. They take a battery, and this battery can last up to four hours. So it depends if you have put like a really big battery, it can last forever. Very light. And uh, I'm gonna give these two lights to Caroline. She's my student. She has bought all the courses. And uh, I see she does a lot of uh, wedding videography. She's a female, actually. So I'm gonna give her these lights. If you are watching this video, just uh, contact me tomorrow. I'll courier them to you anywhere in South Africa. All right. So the other items that I'm going to give, I have, um, when I started, um, <coughs> lighting was a big problem. And um, you know how important lighting for video is. So I was just really like buying anything that was cheap to use, to take advantage, right? So I bought a few lights that pushed me, actually. And uh, here. Here they are. They are, I think they are, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, they are eleven, and I'm gonna give, uh, I'm gonna give all of them away. I'm gonna give two to each. So there are students that enrolled in my class, um, I think three of them from Zambia, and I wanted to give Mr. Mike Major. He has been my follower, he always share my stuff, he has shown support. Um, he's also actually my member. He bought my courses some time back. So I'm gonna give him three of these lights. Three, so these lights, they, they are low end. I think I bought them 240 each. And yar, these ones are so bright, very bright. Two of these lights, you can shoot the whole wedding. And the, prop, the good part is they are connected with the power straight. They are so bright, like insanely bright and very small. You can hook them to any stand, very good lights. I've used these lights even on some of the celebrity shoots that I've done. You know, sometimes as a, a backlight, you know, sometimes as a few lights and stuff like that. So I'm gonna give away 11 of them today, 11 of them, uh, Mike Major, I'm gonna give him three of them, and then the rest, I'm gonna give them two, 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 two. Um, there's two people who uh, who purchased the course. I, I just can't name their names off the cuff now, but I'm gonna check, and I'm gonna send them. If you purchased my course uh, from me, and you are from Zambia, uh, the three of you actually, I'm gonna give these lights to you all, and the other part which is so important when it comes to video is sound, you know. Most people actually ask you, what kind of camera do you, when you go live, your sound is okay because I always have taken my time to invest in good sound. So when I was starting, I didn't really have enough money and I used to go live or whenever I'm doing um, interviews and stuff like that, this was the microphone that I was using. This was the lapel microphone that I was using. This is Audio Technica. The sound quality of this thing is insane. It's Audio Technica, it's a lapel microphone. It takes four batteries and these batteries, the, it doesn't use all four of them. It uses two batteries. So when two of them finish, you don't have to change the battery. It goes on and on. And the good part is you can actually plug it with the adapter. So you can actually run this thing the whole day without uh, interruption, it has got serious antennas as you can see. This is a really good lapel microphone and I haven't used it since I think 2021. So there is a gentleman, his name is Mr. Lewis Kasavi. 
GGS production in Mongo. He does a lot of uh, most non-government organizations and all the organizations that comes to that side of the province, uh, he, they take him to go and do like uh, documentaries and stuff like that. So I believe this will help him also in his documentary video. All right, so I'm going to give this to him. Mr. Lewis Kasavi just contact me. I'll send this together with the lights. I'll, I'm going to send the lights, all the lights to Mike. I'm going to send all the lights to Mike Major and he will distribute to other people in Zambia. There's one man who's supposed to get the lights. I remembered his name is Mr. Joe, uh, Joe Blow. He attended my workshop when I was in Zambia. And the time that I was supposed to give these lights, I was away. So I promised him that he's going to get two lights as well. They are good. And the best part is most people say, hey, man, those lights are too bright. You can buy what you call this thing. You can buy, I was using them with a, what, what is that thing that reduces the intensity of light? So I have that switch that reduces the intensity of light. And what I did with most of these lights, you can see I added gels. Sometimes I add a red gel when I want to modify the color of the light because they're insanely bright, especially if you're doing music videos. You can put these in the background. Others I had put like a blue gels inside. I and screwed and put a blue gel inside. So this one comes as a blue color, this one comes as a red, this one, another one comes as a green. You know, so if you cannot buy those super high quality RGB lights, you can modify. You know, most filmmakers actually, they work against their equipment. Find a way to work with what you have. So at this point, I was just actually really working with what I have and it helped me get by. So yeah, I've talked about these lights. And then there are three gentlemen who purchased my course today. They are from South Africa. So I have these three terabyte, uh, two terabyte each hard drives. They are actually 10. But for this one, since it's not an official giveaway where I really give away to students in filmmaker, I just want to support the people who have already started buying um, my course because as they are supporting that course, they are also supporting me to be coming live. They are also supporting me to pay for the platform. So if I have anything that I don't use, I think those are people who deserve and that is one way that I support my students. I just don't support them with um, skills and all those stuff. I support them with other stuff that I may have. All right. So I'm going to give, um, I'm going to contact them and give them their, their Three people who bought today from South Africa. Uh, the other name is what? I don't want to just check. Let me just check. So that when I mention their name, actually, they should know that I'm talking about them. All right. Uh, I get a lot of messages. Oh, all right. This is Mr. Belina Sivanda. Mr. Belina Sivanda, he just purchased the course. You can even see his proof of payment is still there. So just purchasing, by purchasing that course for 1.5, he has also gotten a two terabyte hard drive. So I'm just gonna format and give, maybe he can save some of the stuff. I have a lot of these hard drives. They were 10 that I was not just using. You know, most of the time I have a cloud storage like a 14 terabyte cloud storage where I back up all my stuff. I also have some hard drives you know, but they are mostly four terabyte hard drives and six terabytes. So I don't really use the two terabytes anymore because they become so many <laughs> within a shortest period of time. That is just how much data I shoot. All right, and uh, the other thing, uh, I think these things, there are two. Um, these ones I'm gonna give to the people who who are enrolled in my live, I used to do master classes, you know, where I used to teach how to live stream um, those master classes. And I promised those people that I'm gonna give you capture card. I just didn't, I just never really get time, guys. I just, <laughs> I never really get time to give these items to any one of them. But one of the person that I really want to give is um, Miss Lee. She works for SABC. I've been working with her actually since 2016. And when I released my course, that time she was already working in that big production. Eh? So when I released my course, 
she knows what I can do. So she joined my course, she's my student. So uh, she joined my live streaming class because I think she wants to, to, she was telling me that she wants to learn these things so that she can start going in the field and do live streaming for news, for live news and stuff. So yeah, this one is going to be for her. I think I have another one there that I'm gonna just give to anyone inside that group. So you know yourselves. All right, so that is it with giveaways. This is not an official giveaway. Um, the official giveaway maybe might come next week. I'm just waiting for uh, some people to join. Even these people who have already joined, they're still, they are still qualified to the giveaways that I'm going to do, where I'm going to give away that Ronin that you are seeing there. Uh, I'm going to give that Ronin to two people because it comes in two pieces. There's a focus motor, there's a, um, a small rig there. So the focus motor and the small rig, I'm going to give it to one person because both of them combined is 15,000 worth. And then the Ronin S itself, it's an old timer. I've been using that thing for a long time and it's just here as a decoration. It's gathering dust. Even the Ronin M, it's only that I love it so much, but I actually really have like three versions of the Ronin M. There's this one, Ron, this one is Ronin MX that you are seeing in the background. I have the Ronin M and the Ronin MX, the bigger one. So I just buy equipment. Sometimes um, this one, I once used it on a commercial advert because you can hook it to a drone and you'll be able to control it with the drone. That's why I bought this one. The other Ronin M, it was my daily driver Ronin M that I was shooting everything with, but it, it was for small DSLR cameras. Then when I was using a RAID camera, I once hired a RAID camera. There was a time I was doing a Netflix um, sort of talk show. I was one of the cinematographers there and they were using RAID. And you know, my, my style of videography is movement. So I had to just buy the Ronin MX, ever since I bought it, I used it maybe how many times? Maybe six times, less than 10 times. It's just they are packed, you know, because I believe in one thing. The more, as a creative, if you learn to invest in equipment, it gives you a certain perspective of new creativity. You know, right now, if you bought a new camera, yo, you're gonna spend the whole night trying to figure out what you can do with that camera and stuff like that. So that's why I accumulate this gear like real quick. Oh, I forgot there's a laptop here as well. Yeah, I'm gonna find who to give, but maybe this one is gonna come in there. That laptop I was using to edit, but now it just sits down there, right? It's a i7 seventh generation. It has got 16 GB of RAM. It has got a uh, four GB of graphics card. I believe, yeah, so, so yeah, those, that is what is uh, involved in the giveaways. So if you want to be part of these giveaways, I run a website where I teach videography. And if you just become one of the students there, those are the people that I support. It's my extension of supporting my students. And uh, let's get into today's topic. If you have any questions, let me know at this point. All right, please save three lights for me as well. I'm so interested in the lights. Uh, I have many lights. I have many lights. These are the, those things that I packed a long time ago, but I have soft boxes. You'll see when we do a major giveaway, I wanted to give almost 30 items in one live stream. But then there are the few makers <laughs> They are never serious. They are never serious. <laughs> Greetings following all the best, my one prince, surely blessed in the hand that he gives. Be blessed all the time again and again. I'm enjoying good fruits of UFC. Uh, that, that is Mr. Lewis. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, I'm gonna send this microphone to you and uh, I think you almost wanted a drone at some point. We're gonna see what we'll do. I can see Mr. Derek is watching. Uh, which gimbal works for Nikon? Any gimbal can work, any gimbal can work. Um, that is Mr. Tsepo. I'm interested in the laptop, would like to make it a bonding router server. Uh, maybe you'd be lucky to win it if you joined my class. Pedro, you didn't get back to me over GH5. I want to buy. Oh. Yo, all right. Uh, no, I'm going to get back to you over this one. But if you want to buy a Lumix GH5, I think those cameras are too pretty expensive uh you you get second hand ones for 
15, uh, not 15, for 20, 22 uh, in the shops around. But if you are my student, you get things a little bit cheaper. So if you want a, a, a cheaper GH5, I have like six of them, four of them that are always just there. I'm only using maybe one or two. <laughs> I no longer do those live shows. So yeah, if you want to get it from me and you are my student, I can make it 15,000. All right, okay, how to register? Um, you just go to ufc.unifyinventive.net. I'm gonna send the link. One of my team members is gonna send the link in the, there's a link already on the comment section there. You can just check it out. Live from Malawi, Chimu, Chizumula Island. Chizumula Island. Thank you so much, people from Malawi. I was in Malawi for some time. I was in, uh, if you know, in Zomba. I was also in Blanta at some time, in Mzuzu at some time. I was also in Longwe at some time. Do you know that there isn't any country in Africa where I haven't been to? <laughs> Never. You can mention any country. I'll tell you which city I was in that country. You know, I've been to Cameroon in Yaoundé. I've been to Abuja. I've been to Wari State. I've been to... Any country you can mention in Africa been there, and a few overseas as well, just doing few making alone, you know. So for some of you are wondering, hey, who is this guy who is making himself a, as if he knows too much about few making, doing all this stuff? <laughs> it's a nobody actually, but I'm going to tell you where all this thing is coming from when we start our today's topic. But I have done a few works, notably on TV, on, I've worked with a lot of celebrities, especially here in South Africa, I've worked with people like Casper Nyovest, AKA, may his whole list in peace. I've worked with people like DJ Tira, Master KG, Somiz, DJ Zinkle, uh, Nadia Nakai, Amanda Dupont, Faith in Kids, a lot of them, almost half of the celebrities. And I, I think there isn't any celebrity that I haven't worked with in South Africa, of most people that are known. So, when we go to Zimbabwe, you talk about Freeman, you talk about Knox, you talk about uh, Jema. All those people are people that I've worked with. In fact, I was the best videographer of the year in Zimbabwe uh, in 2022. <laughs> so there are a few things that I like to share, and I think maybe today you're going to know why, why I do this. All right, so let's get into today's topic. Uh, why it is difficult in Africa. If you are a filmmaker in Africa, like it is just really difficult for you to make it, even if you do everything right. Number one is filmmaking in Africa doesn't really have support. Support at three levels. In, in fact, support at all levels. You know, lack of support from family, lack of support from fellow filmmakers, lack of support from even the government. You know, when I started videography, my father actually wanted me to do a a course. This, what I wanted, I wanted to do mechanical engineering after I finished high school. I needed to go to college and do mechanical engineering. But after I finished the school, I couldn't get bursary to go uh, there. And then my father organized for me to say I should do another small course just so that I can have papers and really, you know, secure a job. But then what he wanted me to do, I didn't like it. it was, I wasn't really passionate about it. So I had to just really like find something else that could replace my dream of becoming uh, a mechanical engineer. So I looked around, even before I started doing videography, I used to produce instruments for musicians, you know. I wanted to become like a DJ. I started actually making music in uh, Barosland there in Mongo. I started making music. If you ask Lady Mocha, if you ask uh, people like, uh, who is that one, Prince, if you ask people like, um, you know, a few producers there, they, this, they will tell you to say the guy started doing a little bit of music. But that time, there was a lot of people doing music. Ah, there was Jaboy, there was uh, Red Ox, there was everybody. There is a, who is this one? This man, I love him a lot. There's a lot of guys, every, almost every guy that I knew, they were doing music and they were doing it better than I was. You know, I don't know whether. Yeah, I didn't have skill in that area, so I had to look for something else to do. And I looked around, nobody was, was really like doing videography. So I started uh, pivoting my focus towards videography. And by that time, there was no like YouTube. You know, we didn't even have like smartphones at that time. We are talking about 2006. And if you know, uh, at that time, 
Zambia was the poorest country in Africa. And the place where I was staying, it was in Mongo, it was the poorest country in Zambia. So I was staying in the poorest area of the poorest country. So to access things like computers, those things, we just used to see them on a magazine, not even on, you know, we used to live in a community where it was just my father who had a TV. Anytime there was something watch playing on TV, a lot of neighbors would come to our house and watch, you know, that was the kind of setup from when I started. So I didn't really like start with um, YouTube. I didn't really start with uh, people a lot of people doing videographs, like maybe you can get inspired or you can go to someone else and ask. I had to, you know, to start just on a blank sheet, on a blank paper, you know. So, number one, there was no support. Uh, my father really wanted me to do something with regards to school. So when I introduced this thing of videography, he didn't really have a problem with it, but he was just worried to say, ah, you know what, I know maybe you like these things of videos, but if you could do a paper, you know, it, it would mean a lot for you. But then I still resisted and I just took the road off myself, you know. So I tried to look among the family members, maybe there will be someone who will understand what I want to do. You know, if you are a musician, a videographer, in Africa, maybe now, because things have been a little bit modernized, not in those times when I started, it was a no, 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 no situation. That is the first, first biggest challenge that I hit. So I turned out to one of the aunties who were doing very well. He offered to sponsor me if I was willing to do a certain business course. I also turned down her offer. Instead, I asked her to say, can you just empower me with uh, some money so that I can start my videography? <laughs> my videography company. You say, ah, what nonsense are you talking about? So mostly, some of you are coming from modern families and stuff like that who have seen the fruits of videography. Maybe you might not have a problem, but I still know that there are uh, videographers, aspiring videographers, who are still going through such lack of support from their family. You know, in, in the state, one man who inspires me a lot, Parker Wilbach, you know, I used to follow him a lot. I even joined his course. His course cost around 16000 and I bought that course back in 2017 just to see what he is doing. Not that I wasn't good, but, you know, learning from each other, I'm going to talk about it. So when he is talking about how he started, he went to his father and asked for 6000 US dollars so that he can invest in his videograph business. And his father, he believed in him. He said, ah, you know what? It's a career. I can support it. And he gave him that money, and he bought all the equipment that he needed. He bought Canon 5D, nice lens, nice gimbal. And soon, people started to look at him as if he's a, this pro videographer, even if he was starting. He even got a lot of gigs through because of his gear. You know? But if you are a, an African filmmaker, Forget about support from families. They don't believe in those things of art. If you are a musician, they don't believe in such things. Another support that is not there is from fellow videographers. You know, when I started videography, there were some videographers that were not really staying in my area. They were from my area, but they were in other towns, right? So whenever I met them, sometimes I would just really ask a few questions. I really wanted someone to, to ask a few questions because remember, I was just blankly going through, all it, uh, through, uh, through it all by myself. So I would really like want to be very close to other videographers who I knew there was one man who was working for a certain uh, organization. Oh, that man, you ask him something, you, he, they, for some reason, African videographers, they just want to shine alone. Like, they don't want to share, you know? Uh, there are few people, there's a gentleman who had a camera. That gentleman was not even using that camera. They were, the organization where he was working from, they bought that camera. Just, it was staying there. I'll go there and do a few uh, jobs for him you know, because I didn't have a camera. But when I want to ask for it so that I can take it with me and go and shoot, and he was old, you know, I was looking, I was talking to him as a father, as an uncle, someone who can look at 
a child who has got a passion in this thing, who is trying to make it, but it will never. You go to another videographer, I'm asking for your camera just for a day, you know, I, I don't mind paying. It's not a matter of paying, I don't need your money, I just want to have my camera. That's why if you see, most people who doesn't know me, maybe they might think, oh Pedro, this guy started, he just launched his course last year, now he's trying to make money out of this. I've been teaching videography since 2010, church after church, any person who wanted to learn, I've been teaching them, even for me to create this platform. Uh, the UFC platform. It is because the demand was just increasing. I was getting, uh, I was getting, like lots of questions from different countries. And the only time to unify, that's why my company is even called Unify, you know. And the only time to unify these people was through a platform like Unify Film Class, where I teach videography step by step, right? So the Support from other videographers, it's not there. There is no. There is no. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe things have been modernized, but other videographers even used to treat videographies as if it's some kind of a shrine. Like, I don't know. Like, they take it so, when they are walking like this, they just want to feel themselves like they are the ones who are filmmakers, you know? I am the only professional until today who still works with upcoming artists. Not because I'm so desperate for projects, but I know someone who has a skill, they are not really given chance by people who have gone before. So for me, I haven't really made billions or millions of money in this career, but I'm driving a Range Rover, guys. <laughs> you know, I have my own house. I have my all the equipment that I need from just videograph. So I know that there is a sport. There is a sport in this industry. In fact, right now there is so much demand of video or of videograph. There's a lot of small businesses that need videos. There's a lot of, you can't go wrong in videography. There is money everywhere. I just told you now today that I sold my course to six people. You know, uh, two of those people bought each course for 600 rand, two of them. And then four of them bought uh, the, the whole package for 1.5. So just seated alone, just seated in jail, I have made 7,000 today only without going anywhere. So if you take my videograph, uh, there's a course that I just released now, vid, uh, business in videograph. I talk about how to make money in videograph and sharing some of the tips. These tips that I share, it's not like I read them somewhere. It is actually things that I use myself to make money. You know, even if you ask any person who has enrolled in any of my course, they'll tell you to say, this is not even an online course. This is real stuff. You know, I only teach the things that I know someone who wants to shoot would want to know. I don't go through those stuff of theory or the first camera was using this film. So when light hit the film, now that was the sensor. Never. I just go straight at the point. Okay, if you want to set up your camera for music videos, these are the settings that you put. This is how you put it and these are the result. I, I teach and show you the result so that you can replicate those things, you know. So that is the support that I even told myself to say, when God blesses me and I become like this videographer that I want to be, I'm going to help others because this attitude where people who are doing these things are not helping each other is a really bad attitude. If you go to the States, if you go to uh, Australia, if you go to other countries, filmmakers support each other, support each other like crazy. But in Africa, we don't support each other. And if there is no support of each other, you know when two makers meet, I always do these workshops and most people think it's a way of making money. Those things, they just waste my time. I just have passion to put this knowledge to other people. But when filmmakers meet, they, is, they share what we call knowledge. You know, you can tap into another client's base. Oh, bro, what do you do? Oh, no, I, I do wedding videos. What about you? Oh, me, I do wedding videos. Oh, so that person who, ha who does wedding videos, the time that he gets a music video, he will pass it on to another videographer because People ask me for everything. Uh, do you do photo shoot or do you do uh, uh, others even ask, do you do those, pon po what do you call those uh, pony hub videos? Do you do those pony hub videos? So 
those are things that I don't do, but I'm a videographer, so I'll pass it to another <laughs> videographer that I think he can like to go and shoot people who are naked. You know? So it's like that. All right. So number three, videography doesn't even have support at government level. You know, I have never heard anything coming from Africa saying, no, we are, we are trying to support content creators uh, with lights, with cameras, with nothing. The only stuff that I hear is we, you hear that the government has put so much money to distribute condoms. <laughs> but uh, even the, some of the you know, um, uh, government wings that deal with arts and culture and stuff, the stuff that they, they do in there, like, it doesn't really support content creators or content filmmakers. You never really hear that the government has organized this workshop uh, hiring experts to come and teach videography in that community. You know, there are a lot of people who are making money in the United States just doing YouTube, not even going out and say and look for clients, but just doing YouTube itself. Those guys are making millions, millions of runs. Just a small boy like this in the house, in the corner. They are making millions of runs. And here in Africa, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of unemployment to the youth, but the government doesn't really look at the content creation and try to, to facilitate certain things that can help, you know, upcoming filmmakers, you know. Upcoming filmmakers are left alone to figure out things by themselves. So that was the biggest challenge that I faced when I began, you know. There is more to that, but in a nutshell, because I want to speak a few things more. <laughs> mm. uh, I'm inspired already. Big up, Mr. Pedro. Thank you so much. Uh, Pedro, if someone is not inspired by your work, I don't know what will inspire such a person. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, Ish, a job is a job, Pedro. we got to be professional. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, exactly. True points. Thank you so much. All right, let's go to the next. So how did I overcome such a, such a hurdle or such lack of support? You know, so I never really started, like I said, I never really started videography as something that I wanted to do, all right? I actually really, like, wanted to do it to generate some income so that I can support myself uh, to go to college. So when I started doing it, it didn't have that much of a support. My uncle who is watching here, Mr. Lewis, he will tell you where we are coming from with this art, all right? It didn't really have such sort of support. So in that case, you are the only support system that you have. So I had to develop a certain genuine um, passion for the craft itself. I had to develop a craft, a, a passion to craft videograph, uh, videos. You know, so that is how I got by. So I didn't really care who was supporting or who was not supporting. I just really like, okay, I want to do this and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure I succeed at it. Right? So I learned a few things by myself by watching videos, you know, uh, Nigerian movies at that time, you know, by watching some of these uh, videos and to go to. To, to make things even easier for me, we had a sort of like a, those village cinema where you put a TV there and then a group of people in your community, they come and watch like cinema. So we had such, and I used to be the one changing tape. So I just learned through the old school way, without a camera, without anything. So uh, I tried to learn a few things that I could and wait and hoping that one day Someone with a camera will pass by, then I'll ask for the camera and just try to see these things inside the camera itself. And then uh, to thank, uh, to, to, to glorify God, my father received a gift of a camera, you know, like those old JVC camera, those which we are using I-8 tapes. And you know, it was not really like a camera that you could, <laughs> you could just take anyhow, you know, you only have to use it in his presence or under strict conditions. And you know me, I'm very good at obeying orders. <laughs> if my father sent me to go and say, go and shoot a, a funeral, you know, I'll just go and do that and return it. You know? So yeah, I used that i8 camera, that JVC handicam to, you know, look at a few things and stuff like that. And I learned a few things until I became a talk of the town to say, oh, no, if you want videos, just go to Mr. Kakorio's son, San Pedro. Ah, that guy is talented. And to be honest, 
There wasn't even talent there. You know, it was just passion itself. I didn't even know what is shutter speed. I didn't even know what is frame rate. I'd, I was just really just like, if the camera looks bright, it's bright. I'll just adjust a button there and I see it's bright and I'll go with those settings just like that, you know? And at that particular time, I was like, uh, you know, since now I'm known a little bit in the town, so I started really like trying to get bigger gigs and I couldn't, right? Which brings me to point number two, why it is difficult to succeed as an African videographer. Point number two is um, partial skill, right? Partial skill. Uh, what I have learned from a lot of my students and what I've learned from uh, other videographers that I've met in Africa, they don't know their story, man. They are videographers, but they don't know their story. You know, one day I was invited to go and shoot a, 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 a live video a live video kind of a show, you know. So I took my four Sony A7, uh, Sony A7 III, yeah, because they are good in low light. So I took those cameras to go and film that uh, live video kind of a show. And I found other videographers there, and they're asking me to say, uh, so what cameras are you going to use to shoot this video? So I'm, I'm like, no, I'm going to use those uh, 4K cameras. So ah, no, man, you can't use such a small cameras uh, to shoot this show. So I'm like, hey man, this is 2017. This is Sony A7 III. It's the latest. What camera do you shoot on? There's, uh, no, we shoot on HD. Yeah, I know there's HD, there's 4K. I'm talking about which camera do you shoot on? He said, no, we shoot on those big HD camera. You know? So they know videography, but they, they just really don't know it. And they don't really want to invest time to know it. That's why I even created this uh, online film school, right? Most of the videographers that I made, that, that I've made, most of them, let's say 90%, they don't even know what shutter speed does. They don't even know what, or what picture style to use properly because they are working on partial skill. Like, they don't want to feather their knowledge in the, in the craft itself. So that thing also hindered me so much. You know, I actually thought, like, I knew these things and until... I had an opportunity to travel to Lusaka and I see what other guys were doing. That's when I know, like, ah, oh, come on. I didn't even know what is frame rate. I don't even know what is a camera sensor. I even the lenses, I could just put any lens. Oh, this lens looked dark, man. This lens doesn't show nicely. Then I take a 50 millimeter. Yeah, I like this lens. I, I, I didn't even know what is the f-stop, what is focal range. All those things I didn't know. And a lot of videographers operate like that. And it's mostly Africans. You know, when you get out of Africa and there are, there are other white people or, or other black people that are in America that still struggle with these things, but not in the way that us Africans here, we struggle with them. Because them, they take time to actually understand something before they do it. But with Africans, they want to do something, then try to understand it, you know. So that is one of the major problems. I was working on a partial skill whereby I was missing so much, uh, so much, so much important details in my videos. Th the videos were creative, you know. Creatively, I was there, but technically, I wasn't, you know. I was very creative. If someone comes with a music video or with a wedding video, the creative camera angles, movements, and stuff like that, they were there, but on the wrong camera settings, on the wrong everything. So. That is one thing that is really a major challenge. And this is one thing that uh, if you are not succeeding in videography and you're, you can't see clients coming to you, and it's not because you haven't really done enough. You have done almost everything, but maybe you rushed the skill process too quickly without quite mastering it properly. And it doesn't take a lot of time. If you go to any of my course, if you want to learn the, everything that has to do with a camera, what kind of camera, camera angles, everything, that course can just take you a week and you'll really be good. But just that time for a person to say, no, I want to learn, or I want to learn, even if sometimes you know, you know, 
just learning from what other people are doing it's very very important that's why even in these courses i'm encouraging them to any videographer whatever that you know just put it out there so that other people can learn how you handle certain situations how you shoot how you do some of other videographers can learn from you so that is a big challenge that is what is leading to most people not even getting clients in my course business videography business skill is tip number three you know develop your skills make sure you, you have competitive skills in the industry so how did I do that <clears throat> I quickly learned that um, I quickly realized that oh most of the time people are not coming to me is because I'm having below average skill it is good it's videos but it doesn't really like have some sort of you know standard that people are looking for so what I did is I volunteered to work in the church because they had equipment that time I didn't have equipment right so I volunteered to work in the church for free creating them the same average videos while using some of their equipment to learn to you know I was having access now to the internet I was having access to a camera to a computer so every day if you ask uh, Bushiri's young brother um, his name is whom um, Shama or Pastor Richard they'll tell you to say that guy I never used to sleep every single day I would watch tutorials just to see what other people are doing and stuff like that you know it was a mixed bag I would really I would literally watch everything and then that was also a slightly hazardous because most of the stuff that you watch on YouTube, you find that you actually don't even use it in a real life practically. Because if you really want to learn uh, videography and being a filmmaker in videography um, in Africa, you actually really have to learn from other African filmmakers because the challenges, videographers got a lot of challenges and the challenges that people in America face in videography it's not really the same as challenges that they face in Africa. So if you learn from somebody who is an African filmmaker, you actually can relate. So I was just there on YouTube hitting any tutorial, anything that was just focused on learning. And most of the stuff that I was learning, I found 90% of it, I was not using it, you know. It was just really solid because there wasn't really people in the surrounding that I could look up to, you know. Nowadays, uh, if you go on YouTube, you'll find other videographers in Africa doing amazing works. Those are videos that you should watch because you can relate a little bit to the learning process. So I had to sacrifice three years, three years, no payment, just learning videography so that I can understand it. If I don't understand, there, there are times that I used to go behind the backyard, I'll film the dog, I'll film myself, trying to do all these effects and stuff like that. Until uh, Mr. Bushiri now saw, hey, there's this guy in Zambia, he can do nice videos. So he started, hey, can you come also and do videos for me? Because what did they see? The skill itself. They could, my skill could now see that this, this is some serious stuff. You know, so that's how I even came to here to come also and help him in the church and stuff like that. And then I eventually stopped and started things myself. So I had to take my time to sharpen the skill, you know, to sharpen the skill. So if you think your skill is slightly below average, you are creating videos, but when you compare them with other filmmakers, you feel like you are lacking learn ask questions from fellow filmmakers don't feel like oh no people think like maybe i didn't know no you know learning you have to be humble to you have to have a teachable spirit because some of us it's just people who teach us you know experimenting asking around asking questions i'm still curious even today you know when i work with some other filmmakers you know there's this filmmaker in cape town who created this movie you know even though i know how to do these things but when i'm with him like i want to learn i want to to figure out what he knows so that I can also apply it and see how it can improve my skill. So partial skill is the greatest challenge in most African filmmakers. And that's why they complain, hey, I can't get clients, stuff like that. It's partial skill, man. It's not competitive. So if you want to gain videography skill in the shortest period of time, check out my courses. I teach the only things that you need to know as a filmmaker. And then the other thing that is a big challenge to African filmmakers is low budget clients. You know, 
not only Africans, they don't believe in filmmakers. They also don't believe in the products themselves. You know, an African person, when they give you a gig, it's like they did you a favor, you know? Like, they don't have enough budget. And most of the people that I have met, they are very skewed, very skewed. Only that the clients that they work with, they don't have budget. You know, most of these videos that we admire, oh, look at this video of really when. The people who worked on that video, they actually don't even have any skill. They just no camera settings, no skill. Whatever that is working there is just money. It's just money. And I always say to say, it's not really actually the camera that makes the video really good, you know. It is about how the whole concept of the video has been put where there is money, people are attracted. Even if you are shooting with your phone, but you are shooting somebody like who have money to put in their video or in their project, man, everything is possible. Even if you don't have a skill, you can still create good videos. You know, if you see this thing is not working, ah, let's destroy it, let's buy another one. There is money. But if you are working with clients from Africa, most of them, they come with low budget. They don't want to pay properly. You know, they don't, even, they don't even take videography serious. The videographer, the person who is doing the work seriously, they take him as if some kind of a failure and stuff like that. Even up today, we still face such kind of stuff as videographers. So you find that someone doesn't even have money, but they want their videos to look like uh, Celine Dion's video, or they want to look it, make it look like Nicki Minaj's video. But they, they just really have this little budget. There is nothing. There is, no matter how much skilled you can be, if the budget is low, it will show. If the budget is low, it will make you look like you didn't know what you were doing. So that is another major challenge, you know. In Western worlds, they actually really know the importance of video. If I have a small business and I want to promote it, they believe to say, if I created a small short video, uh, it can actually give my potential clients an insight into my business. But in Africa, you've, I've had musicians who come and tell me to say, oh, no, I want to shoot a music video and stuff like that. I will help most of the musicians that I shoot, some of them I actually use my own money, my own money to just put in their project so that where they can't really push, I can help. Even though they have paid me, I can use some of their budget just to make sure certain things look okay on set. And after I do that effort, they'll come to me, so how do I make money from this thing, man? How do I make money from, uh, from this video? <laughs> I mean, you went to the studio, you sang a song, eh? Now you don't even know what you want to do with this song. Ah, me, I think when you put me on, the, on TV, I'll be famous. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And that is the biggest problem that filmmakers face. I don't know, maybe you are not facing it, but me, I faced it. Low-budget clients, low-budget. Even if you create a nice script, this is what we want, this is what we want. Maybe out of 100 videos that I can do, maybe two reached the budget, 80, 98 of them. They will just come and say, yeah, I will not afford this, I will not afford this, I will not afford this. So at the end, even if you have the skill, you don't really look like you are doing something. All right. Uh, when I Pedro Noire Kai, our brother, <laughs> will be always in memory. <laughs> Who said this? Uh, Emmanuel, <laughs> Mr. Nyande, <laughs> my network is fighting with me. <laughs> I am learning a lot here. That is Mr. MJ, you are shaping me too much. That's Mr. Mike Major, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, bye. <laughs> Passion, nyaka, nyaka. this guy is a genius, bro. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you a lot, guys. I can see the comments. Uh, let me just uh, put in another. Surely, one prince, we, uh, we have sleepless nights, even nights after sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely, the situation regarding ad support in our local community is disheartening. It's truly unfortunate that those who excel in such creative realms often exhibit such selfish attitude. That is really true. This is why your work resonates so deeply with me. It stands out for itself uh, and uh, genuine dedication to the craft. You are such a real god. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, 
everybody. Thank you so much. You are my inspiration, uh, Mr. Given Wanda Minasilo. Thank you so much, Mr. Given. Thank you so much for joining. All right. So. Uh, low budget is one of those problems. And then the other problem that I wanted to discuss is, okay, I, I skipped the obvious, you know, like lack of capital, lack of money to buy good equipment, because those things, they contribute, you know. I can create a really good video with just a smartphone, but just really having an actual camera, it contributes you can create really good videos with a cheap DSLR camera that costs less than 3000 right? But if a client saw you with that camera and stuff like that, they will not really like have a lot of faith in you, you know? They will not really have like a lot of trust in your craft, even though you trust yourself. So investing in good equipment, it is one of the, I don't know if I'm the only one who had this disease. But, you know, when my skills started moving a little bit, I was making a few thousand kwacha. You know, I was making a few monies. But just for me to take that money and just buy a whole camera, I felt like, ish, man, this is going to be a loss, man. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one who faced Sometimes let's just be genuine, you know. We can have all these other challenges, lack of support. But other things, it's us, guys. For me, I had a problem. I knew that there is this lens when I put it, it makes my videos nice. And sometimes I could make such money to buy that lens. Just for me to buy that lens, I don't know whether I was doubting the skill itself. I was really passionate about it. I, I wanted to do it. I wanted it to excel. But at some point, I'll come across some monies like I could just buy a nice microphone. Then I have sorted my sound problems forever. Investing in my skill is one big problem Africans have, uh, the filmmakers themselves. For some reason, someone would really like save money and buy a nice phone, nice phone, 15,000. I have seen filmmakers who are using really nice phones, but those people that are busy asking me, hey, you don't have a small camera. Hey man, that 15,000, I could have bought two DSLR cameras in that money, man, and start my videography career nicely. So I don't know if I'm the only one who had this disease, but that is one of the biggest hindrances to most African filmmakers, lack of investing in their own career. You know, you don't have a support. That one, you have to make peace with it. But you have to be your own support now. If you get money uh, from a project, don't just get that money and go and buy a bling bling and look like you are making it in life. I don't know. I don't believe in such kind of stuff myself. But to those who believe in such to say, oh no, if I have like a, a, a quick 5,000, then I have to buy that Jordan shoe for 3,000. I feel like if you really want this videography thing also to work, the way you feel like to invest in that Jordan shoe and that expensive watch and expensive phone, I feel like that's the way that you should also feel to invest in this thing of videography. So my career really didn't take off because I was relying on other people's cameras. When I get a project, a quick project, I don't have a camera. I have to figure out where am I going to borrow a camera, you know? So it was going on like that. And after they paid me that money, I'll eat all of it. I'll eat all of it. I'll use it on something else. And when another project comes, I don't have a camera. So I had to, you know, to discipline myself to say, okay, right now, the thing that I'm really struggling with is a camera. Any money that I'm going to get, I have to save up until I buy a camera. I did that. And the moment I started investing in my, in good equipment, not only in cameras, just the skill. Someone here, they know, say, ah, this guy, what he teaches, eh? it's really nice. I think I can learn something, you know. And his course is just $30, ah, $500, I'll, I'll get it. The time that they get that $500, they feel like, Ish, ah, it's a waste of money, man. I'll just learn these things on YouTube. Unless you have really like a coach, <laughs> you know how I coach my students. Anytime they ask me something, if I know this is my student, I'll take my time and explain to them. I will even know exactly what they are asking, you know. There are certain things that even yourself, even if you want to learn on YouTube, if you don't know beforehand exactly what you need to search, you know, there is no way that you will know certain things unless someone else told you to say, ah, you know what, uh, since it's too hot, don't shoot at this particular time, shoot at this time. The reason is because of A, B, C, D. You know, it's quicker. 
You know, even myself, <clears throat> if I'm faced with like a big production, I still ask from my other videographers that I know they have been doing these things. Say, hey man, this is a big production. How do I approach the the budget? How do I approach the production side of stuff? How I, I ask those questions. Those people will be able to know exactly what I'm asking and they'll be able to give me an exact answer to what I'm asking. But if I went on YouTube and typed, oh, how to prepare for a big budget project, I'll find a lot of information that is just everywhere. At the end of the day, I'll spend the whole day trying to figure out something and only use maybe one minute worth of information. So investing in equipment, investing in knowledge, this is something that I've seen most African videographers, they like. You know, sometimes it is not really the other factor. Sometimes it's really us. I have seen this thing. <laughs> maybe you have passion, but I can challenge you now. The next time you have money, 10,000, ah, to buy a camera. Where am I even going to get equipment? Uh, uh, where am I even going to get clients? Yo, I, I'll be wasting money, man. Maybe I should have started uh, selling shoes. Maybe it's quick, quick, you know. So that is one other problem that I have seen in Africa. Uh, there are a lot of problems, but I don't want this life to be too long. All right. So if you have enjoyed this video, I just comment if you have to do part two. There are a lot of challenges that I have passed through. Um, that I, I, I could share and also shed some light. Maybe you could be relating, you know, these things, they can work for me, they might not work for you. So I'm not just putting out there, you should follow. Some of this stuff, just try them. If they don't work, it doesn't work, at least you have tried, you know. And uh, otherwise, thank you so much for those people who want to join my online filmmaking classes. Um, there's a WhatsApp number on this page. You can just inquire from there. I, the special is running out as well. There's a special now. Everything is 50%. You can learn the skill of videography, like from how to shoot, what to look for when buying a camera, what camera angles to use. What, those things, they, they are not that really hard to learn, but they make a huge difference in your production. All right, knowing exactly, say, when I'm going for a shoot, this is the what the camera settings I'm going to use, this is how I'm going to treat this production, those things are very, 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 very important. And if you really want to know how to make money in videography, how to get started without equipment, I have a new course that just released, it's only $30, right, which talks about how to start uh, to explore your passion for videography and some of the things that you need to look out for. You know, which talks about how to improve your skills in videography, how to make money in videography, how to attract clients, how to approach clients. You know, some of other people, they don't just know how to talk to clients. They lose clients. They just don't know how to trap clients. Some of the people, they actually really get clients, but they don't know how to charge for their video. At the, at, at the end, they have a lot of clients, but they can't really make enough money because they're charging clients wrongly. You know, sometimes... It's not, some of people, they just stick to say, me, I'm just going to be shooting events, videos, events. And you see events are seasonal projects. There are other uh, videography genres that are seasonal. You know, one big example is the one that I've mentioned, events. So in the time that events are not happening, as a videographer, how do you survive? So in that business videography course, I have described some of the side hustles. Mostly of these side hustles, they're the ones making money for me. One of it is online film making classes, you know. You, you might be good at makeup. You can make a course, just use your videography skills and make a course for makeup. It is another good side hustle. I don't, the good part, you don't even have to attend to it. It just goes like that. I have discussed in that course things like how to create money from stock footage. Some of you, you stay at, at um, tourist attract, uh, attraction places, locations. You can just go in your village and just shoot nice sceneries of your place and sell that stock footage. Sometimes you might just shoot someone who is fetching firewood. Such stock footage, they sell a lot of... I've described such kind of stuff in that course. Those are the other part, just videograph. Some of you, you don't know how to create good video contracts and stuff like that. I share a lot of this stuff. You know, I share everything because I know at the end of the day, few filmmakers will be willing to try out this stuff. So... I might as well share. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions and if you want us to do part two of this project program, um, feel free to suggest in the comment section. Tomorrow, we, I'm going to be doing live every day, every day, like I started last week. So tomorrow, we're going to start looking at uh, some of the topics that we've been learning. I think tomorrow, I want to touch editing a bit. I haven't really like 
taught video editing so maybe if you are a beginner video editor or maybe you are a seasoned videographer's uh, editor who is already editing you could pass by and learn one or two things but i'm gonna make it a startup for those people who are really starting showing them a few things that they need to be aware of when you are editing and you know there are different cuts cutaways and stuff like that how to use all those things how to mix sound i'm gonna try and attempt to do it live you know last time i did another amazing one color grading if you haven't watched just go through the timeline and watch we color graded the whole clip live and the color grading was good all right thank you very much guys for joining me tonight i'll see you tomorrow again have a blessed night i hope i didn't waste your data <laughs>